Hello, everyone. So today we are going to be reading chapter 10 of the Odyssey, right? We're going to be reading chapter 10 called Father and Son. Before we read, just a couple of reminders, things you want to be thinking about, annotating, and um, keeping track of evidence for, right? Always our archetypal hero traits. Not all of them are listed here, but you should have your list. Some of these that are listed here might be key um, in these final chapters of the book, okay? Another thing we want to be paying attention to, of course, is how Odysseus changes throughout the story. That's a blank page, right? <laughs> how Odysseus changes throughout the story. So how is he growing, evolving? What is he learning? Okay, remember this key term when we think about when we think about Odysseus as a character and this idea of hubris, which we saw so much of during the Wanderings chapters. All right, are we looking for some change in his hubris and how he demonstrates hubris? And that's really something important to keep in mind when you think about the cultural values of the Greeks, right? This story, the Odyssey, is designed to, to teach a lot of lessons to Greek people at the time. And so Odysseus needs to demonstrate what was important to the Greek culture, all right? So that idea of hubris, you want to think about that in relation to this word, humility, right? We're looking for some sort of a change. The ancient Greeks would have wanted their heroes in particular, right, to emulate what all citizens should do and, and behave like. And of course, that included worshiping and respecting the gods, demonstrating humility, especially in front of the gods, and then using your intelligence, right? Using the wisdom, the cunning, and the guile that Odysseus displays so frequently, okay? Quick note on your timeline. This chapter is really interesting because we're we're returning back in some ways to where we were in those first couple of chapters. We go back to the island of Pylos where Telemachus is with Nestor's son um, and with, with Menelaus. And we are really here in the second half of our timeline. You know, we're very close. So this is, you know, this is the Telemachus timeline. Okay. And this is the Odysseus timeline up here show it in full we've learned already now in the story we've learned about all of this through the flashbacks right from chapter five with the cyclops through chapter eight and nine right we've learned about the wanderings and now we're back here in present time again and you'll see on this one okay it says odysseus returns to ithaca and this is where the two timelines the journey of odysseus Right, and the journey of Telemachus that were separate all this time, now they come together, okay? And they're gonna write out the rest of the story here, okay? So this is really right around chapter 10. So if you're marking your chapters on your timeline, that's where we are, okay? All right, now, without further ado, chapter 10, Father and Son. Athena sped south to the hero's princely son. She found him and Nestor's son sleeping on great Menelaus's porch. At least Pisistratus was asleep. Telemachus lay awake, thinking about his father. You've stayed away too long, Telemachus, said Athena. The suitors have no shame. They'll carve up all you have. Your trip here will come to nothing. Urge Menelaus to help you get home and quickly. You should know that some of the suitors are waiting for you in the channel. They mean to kill you. Land on the far side of the island. Go to the house of Eumaeus, the swineherd. Stay the night there. Send him to town to tell wise Penelope that you've made it home safely. Athena went back to High Olympus. The prince woke Pisistratus. Up, friend, he said. Hitch up the horses. Let's head for home. Menelaus was sorry to see them go. I'd never keep you here against your will, he said. He would not let them leave without many gifts. It was Helen, that shining woman, who gave Telemachus the greatest prize. It was a lovely robe woven by her own hands. This is for your bride to wear, she said. Until you marry, let your mother keep it. May you return in joy to your country and your own house. The horses galloped through the city and out into open country. On they flew, holding nothing back. On the second day, they came near Pylos. Friend, I ask you a favor, Telemachus said to Pisistratus. This trip has made us brothers. Don't drive past my ship leave me there. Your father loves being a host. I fear he'd keep me in his palace when I must hurry home, right? So they've left Menelaus's. I apologize. We started in Sparta. Now we're in, we're heading toward Pylos, but um, where Nestor is king and 
Telemachus is asking Pisistratus, let's not go see your dad. I'm sorry. I'm worried that like he's not going to let me do what I've got to do because he's going to want me to stay. Pisistratus agreed. He helped his friend load his ship. Get away fast, he said. Be gone before I tell father. Otherwise, he won't return to the palace without you. He'll be angry in any case. Telemachus called all his men together. He gave orders to cast off. The sun sank and the roads of the world grew dark. A wind from Zeus drove the ship on. As they neared Ithaca, Telemachus turned the ship away from danger, or so he hoped. That night, Odysseus was again taking supper with the swineherd. Listen, Eumaeus, he said. Tomorrow, I mean to go beg in the town. Could, could you send someone with me as a guide? I, I may even have to go to King Odysseus's house. I'd like to tell Penelope my news that he's alive. Do you think these suitors will spare me a meal? Remember, Odysseus is in disguise. Correct, he's in disguise, right? He's still disguised as the beggar, so Eumaeus does not know who he is. You're crazy, the loyal swineherd said. Those suitors, oh, even their slaves are a proud and violent group. No, stay here. You're not a burden to any of us. Wait until Telemachus comes back. He'll be kind to you. Guest and host talked far into the night. At last, they fell asleep. As dawn took her golden throne, Telemachus and his crew were arriving home. Take our ship around to the city, he told them. I've got to see how my farm is doing. I'll be in town later. Tomorrow we'll have a fine feast. Telemachus walked quickly to the farm. The king and Eumaeus were sitting down to breakfast. Eumaeus, I, I think a friend of yours is here, Odysseus said. But the dogs aren't barking at him. Eumaeus was amazed to see the prince. He rushed to him and kissed his face. You're home, Telemachus. I never thought I'd see you again. Dear old man, I am glad to see you, the prince said. Tell me, does my mother still hold out, or has she chosen one of the suitors? Oh, surely, said Eumaeus, she is still waiting in your halls. The poor woman, what a terrible life. Oh, wasting away the nights, weeping away the days. As Telemachus entered, Odysseus rose to offer him his seat. Stay where you are, stranger, said the prince. You may as well find a seat for me. After they had eaten, Telemachus asked the swineherd where the stranger came from. Eumaeus repeated the story Odysseus had told him. I put him in your hands for care and shelter, said Eumaeus. Oh, how I wish I could offer him shelter, said Telemachus. It's those suitors. I'll give him new clothes, a sword and sandals. If you like, keep him here and I'll send up some food. I can't let him go down among the suitors, though. They would make fun of him, and it would break my heart. Eumaeus, go quickly. Go to my mother. Tell her I am home safely. I'll wait here. Tell nobody else. Too many people want to kill me. Eumaeus left for town. Athena watched him go. She came to the house. She was a beautiful, tall woman. The dogs crept away in terror. Athena caught Odysseus's eye. But Telemachus could not sense her. Odysseus, old soldier, now is the time. Tell your son the truth. You and he must plan the suitor's death. I'll be right with you. I'm blazing for battle. Athena stroked him with her wand. He was an old beggar no longer. He was Odysseus. His own son gazed at him in wonder. Who are you, stranger? Telemachus asked. Why, you, you must be a god. Be kind to us. We will give you offerings. No, no, I am not a god. Patient, great Odysseus said. I am your father. I am Odysseus. With those words, Odysseus kissed his son. Together again. Telemachus's tears wet the ground. No, I don't believe it, he said. You're not my father. You're a god. A moment ago, you looked like an old beggar, and look at you now. Telemachus, said his father, I am Odysseus home after many troubles. 
It is Athena's work that changes me. She has that power. I will tell you later how I got here. For now, we must plot what to do about those suitors. Wait, just just the two of us? There are, there are more than a hundred of them. Isn't there anyone who will fight besides us? Just two, said the old soldier, Athena and Zeus. Do you think that that is enough? Telemachus answered carefully. <laughs> they are two great champions, but they live up in the sky. Trust me, said his father. They won't hold off from battle when we face the suitors. Listen now. Go home in the morning. Mix with that cruel crowd. I'll come later, looking like a beggar again. No matter what they do or say to me, hold your peace. Try to reason with them. At my signal, gather up all the weapons in the hall. They'll be black with smoke. Tell the suitors that you're having the weapons cleaned. Tell them, too, that you're worried a bloody fight will break out when they're drunk. Hmm, that would shame them all. Just leave swords and spears for us. Athena and Zeus will do the rest. Now, one last thing. Tell no one that I have come home. Don't tell Laertes or Eumaeus, not even Penelope. We must first learn which of our people have been loyal to us both. Soon, father, soon you will know my courage, Telemachus said. While father and son made their plans, the ship from Pelos pulled into the harbor. The prince's crew sent word to Penelope. It happened that their messenger and Eumaeus arrived at the same time. Penelope was sitting among her women. My queen, your son is home at last, the messenger announced loudly. Eumaeus, though, whispered his message. Then he left to return to his pigs. The news shook the suitors. They crowded out of the hall and sat in front of the gates. We'd better send out a ship, Eurymachus said. Tell our friends waiting to kill Telemachus to come back fast. No need for that, Amphinimus laughed. He pointed to the harbor. Look, they're here. The other suitors went down to meet the ship. They led the crew off to a secret meeting. I can't believe he escaped us, Antinous said. A god must have helped him get home. Very well. We'll kill Telemachus here. Uh, if we don't, he'll rouse the people against us. We'll kill him and divide his goods among us, all but the palace. That goes to the man who marries his mother. The suitors were stunned by this plan. Amphinimus broke their silence. It's a terrible thing to shed the blood of kings, he said. Let's first learn the will of the gods. If Zeus approves our work, I'll kill the prince myself. But if he does not, we must hold back. The others agreed to this plan. They went back to the palace. Penelope was waiting in the hall with her women. A loyal servant had heard the suitors plotting and had told her. You, Antinous, Penelope cried. They say you are the best man your age in Ithaca. You're no such thing. How dare you plot my son's death? Stop! I tell you all, stop! Eurymachus tried to calm her. Wise Penelope, have courage. No man here would do such a thing. Your son has nothing to fear from us. Even as he spoke, he plotted murder in his heart. Penelope went to her room. She cried until Athena sealed her eyes with sleep. At Eumaeus's house, the prince and his father were sleeping too. So this is the beginning of the plot. I would suggest when you go back in and do your reread, right, that you maybe mark, right, what are the steps that Odysseus and Telemachus are taking, right, in order to be able to attack and kill and defeat the suitors, okay? Number them perhaps, put them into a little list, all right, and let us know if you have any other questions. We'll be back for chapter 11.